Warden of the Swans and Marker of the Swans. Historically, this position was filled by one person and was titled Keeper of the Swans. But in 1993, it was decided that swan duty was simply not a one-man job and thus the separate positions of Warden of the Swans and Marker of the Swans were created. These two are responsible for the annual Swan Upping Ceremony. Originally, this meant that the swans on the River Thames were rounded up as a delicious banquet snack. But now the event is much more animal friendly and the queen swans are simply gathered for a census and health check. Yes, another perk of being Queen of England is that you automatically own all the swans in the land. The Grand Carver Well, you didn't expect the Queen to cut her own meat, did you? The Royal Household maintains the position of a Grand Carver, which literally just designates someone to carve up the roast meat for the Queen and her guests. There's also the separate position of Master Carver of Scotland. Surveyor of the Queen's Pictures The Queen's Royal Collection currently includes roughly 7,000 oil paintings and 3,000 miniatures. That's a lot of pictures that need surveying. Desmond Shaw Taylor holds curation responsibilities for all of the Queen's pictures which are on display at the principal royal residences, but are open to the public. This role is not to be confused with the entirely separate role of Surveyor of the Queen's Works of Art. Official Harpist to the Prince of Wales Prince Charles reinstated the role of official harpist to the Prince of Wales. The role of official harpist was discontinued by Queen Victoria. Charles said he hoped the revival of the position would help develop musical talent. Anne Denholm replaced the previous harpist, Susan Swan, after the married woman ran off with an opera singer 20 years older than she, causing what can safely be assumed as the biggest royal harp related scandal in a long time. The Astronomer Royal Back in 1675, King Charles II appointed the first astronomer royal, John Flamsteed, to map out the motions of the heavens. Though largely a ceremonial figure, the astronomer royal is responsible for advising the sovereign on all astronomical matters as needed. The Royal Shoe Wearer one of the Queen's wardrobe staffers is responsible for breaking in her heels. The Queen's dress designer explained that it's only necessary for the Queen to have her shoes broken in so she won't grow uncomfortable at her many events. The Queen's Flag Sergeant this person has the fun task of raising and lowering the royal standard flag outside the Queen's residence to indicate whether or not she's home. The Union flag is raised when she's absent. The flag sergeant also has to follow the Queen around the country, raising and lowering the flag upon her entrance and exit. Keeper of the Queen's Stamps The Queen inherited much of the royal philatelic collection from her grandfather, George V, and apparently has only flipped through the collection once in her life. 
but she does appreciate the need to preserve the collection. The Yeoman Warder act as the ceremonial guardians of the Tower of London, often called Beef Eaters. Their position in the Royal Bodyguard once allowed them to eat all the beef their hearts desired from the King's table. If you visit London, you can catch the Yeoman Warders taking pictures with tourists and talking about the history of the Tower. Master of the Queen's Music Judith Weir is the current Master of the Queen's Music, a role which entails composing music for any important royal events that may occur. She is also the Sovereign's Advisor in all things musical. Masters of the Queen's Music are typically already renowned within the classical music world. Medical Officer to the Queen Abroad Typically a senior surgeon of the Royal Navy, the Medical Officer to the Queen Abroad is essentially the Queen's doctor who accompanies her wherever she goes. The position is more interesting when you consider that the Royal Medical Household also includes two physicians the Sergeant Surgeon, a Surgeon Gynaecologist, a Surgeon Dentist, an Orthopaedic Surgeon, an Apothecary to the Queen, and, well, I think you get the picture. The Queen's Barge Master The Queen's Barge Master is now mainly ceremonial in function. In the past, the Sovereign would regularly travel on the River Thames. 48 royal watermen would row the royal barge up and down the river and the Queen's barge master was in charge of them all. Currently, the royal family use the Royal Noir, the official motor launch, to travel on the river and they always have 25 men standing by to escort them when needed. The Royal Horological Conservator This is actually the Royal Clockwinder who maintains and sets over 1,000 clocks in Buckingham Palace and other Royal Residences. Piper to the Sovereign A position created by Queen Victoria The Piper of the Sovereign acts as the official bagpiper for special events. His main duty, however, is to travel with the Queen and play the bagpipes every morning at 9am for 15 minutes under the Queen's window. Poet Laureate The tradition began in England in the 17th century and the position has been held by many well-known poets such as William Wordsworth and Alfred Tennyson. While the role previously had firmer requirements and political importance, now the Poet Laureate writes poems for special events. According to tradition, the Poet Laureate receives a butt of sack which is about 600 or so bottles of sherry. Page of Honour the Pages of Honour are responsible for carrying the Queen's long, heavy train during ceremonial occasions. And that's pretty much it. The position is usually given to teenage sons of nobility or senior members of the royal household. In 2004, while the Queen was in the middle of a speech, one of her Pages of Honour fainted to the floor beside her. She glanced over at him briefly and then continued on with the speech. Master of the Horse The Master of the Horse now has a mainly ceremonial role and is only seen on rare state occasions where the Sovereign is mounted on horseback. The position, which has been held since the 14th century, used to be one of great importance and political influence. 
and this concludes the video thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this please click the like button give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos thank you